Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome to our channel. From today onwards, we are going to start learning Module 5 Programming Concepts. Don't worry, you don't need any prior programming experience as we will start from scratch and go step by step. This module is going to be very easy. In today's video, we will cover is the programming knowledge required for performance testing, what is Groovy, some features of Groovy and then why do we need to learn Groovy. If you are watching the series for the first time, please watch previous modules of the series and then continue this video. You can find the link to this playlist series in the description. Without any further delay, let's get started. So the first topic is the programming knowledge required for performance testing. Many of you might be thinking why I have included programming concepts module in performance testing must have skill series, isn't it? When I started this series, many people asked me if they want to start their performance testing career, do they really need to know programming concepts or do they really need to have some kind of coding experience? So the answer is you don't need to be a developer or a programmer to start your performance testing career. As long as you are good at programming basics, that is more than sufficient. Here the programming basics are like understanding the concept of variable and data type, understanding different operators like arithmetic, logical and relational operators, understanding different conditional statements like if else, also understanding different loops like for loop, while loop, do while and understand different ways to handle the errors and some debugging skills. If you are comfortable with these basics then you are good to start your performance testing journey. You must be thinking why programming basics are required for performance testing, right? During performance testing, we simulate load onto the application using virtual users to understand the application performance aspects. So the virtual users are not real users and they don't know anything about the application functionality. So performance testers need to provide some kind of instructions to those virtual users so that they can continuously execute those instructions and once the execution is done they will share the results back to the performance testers. The performance testers will develop those instructions in the form of a script using different performance testing tools like load runner, jmeter and neoload etc. So during the script development process there is some sort of customer is also required to simulate real user behavior. Here the customizations like handling different dynamic values from the server response, validating the server response to make sure that the server is giving the right response to the request etc. So if you are aware of the programming basics then you can easily manage these customizations during the script development process. So that is why every performance tester should have some programming basics knowledge. I hope you understand the reason now. Please feel free to mention it in the comment section if you are not still clear with the explanation. Let's move on to our next topic. What is Groovy? Basically, Groovy is a Java syntax compatible object oriented programming language that runs on the Java virtual machine, nothing but JVM. Groovy syntax is pretty much similar to Java. If you know Java, it is very easy to learn and use. If you don't know, don't worry. We will go from scratch and learn all the required concepts. Now let's look at the Apache Groovy Wikipedia site to understand little bit more about Groovy and its history. Apache Groovy is a Java syntax compatible object oriented programming language for the Java platform. It is both static and dynamic language with features similar to those of Python, Ruby and Smalltalk. In computer science, all the programming languages are divided into two categories, dynamic programming languages and static programming languages. Let's look at quickly what exactly the dynamic programming languages is. In computer science, a dynamic programming language is a class of high level programming languages which at runtime execute many common programming behaviors that static programming languages perform during compilation. That means all the dynamic programming languages execute many common programming behaviors like checking for errors, robustness and everything will be done during runtime whereas static programming languages will do all those things during compilation time. So that is the main difference between dynamic programming language and static programming language. To understand little bit more just look at the another website where they explain the differences very clearly. So in static languages if a variable type is defined then only the value of the variable can be changed but the type is static and cannot be changed. So that means if we define an integer we can only update its value and no other data type can be assigned to it. Let's quickly understand here. So here in example, we have defined a variable called number with integer data type. So once we define number with integer data type, we can only store integers in that number variable. So we cannot store any string or boolean data types. So this is applicable for all statically typed languages. Some of the statically typed languages are C++, Java, Go and C Sharp etc. In dynamic languages, the type and values are both dynamic which means the types and values can both be changed. For example, a variable that was previously assigned an integer can be assigned as a string. So the type checking is done during runtime. So this is the main difference. In dynamic languages, the type checking, everything will be done during runtime. Whereas in static programming languages, this will be done during compilation time. And let's look at the example now. In this example, x equal to 8 plus string 10. The addition of these two values will be stored in x. In the next statement, we try to store John. 
one. So we are not dependent on any specific data type here. So we are changing the data type from the previous statement to the next statement. And in the following statement, we try to store the Boolean value, which is false to X. So in dynamic language, we can store any values in the variable. So it is not type bounded. Some of the examples of dynamic programming languages are JavaScript, Ruby, PHP, Python, Groovy, etc. If you want to learn more about Groovy, all the concepts, you can go to the Apache Groovy official website and then go to the documentation where you have extensive documentation about Apache Groovy. So you can learn how to download Groovy, how to install Groovy. You can understand the differences between Groovy and Java. You can learn more about Groovy development kit and there are some language specification topics, Groovy module guides topics, tools, API documentation. This is so much of information. If you want to master Groovy, if you go through all these concepts, I think that is more than enough. But for our performance testing purpose, we don't need to go all these topics. We will learn the topics which are really required for performance testing. Now let's move on to our next topic, features of Groovy. Again, if you go back to the Apache Groovy official documentation, they have listed some of the features in the main page. Fast learning curve. Groovy syntax is concise and expressive, making it easier to read and write code compared to Java. It borrows many features from scripting languages, making it developers friendly. If you are a Java developer, then it will be very easy for you to learn the Groovy and, and start developing something in Groovy because it is concise, expressive syntax, because the syntax is pretty much similar to Java, which makes Java developers can easily pick it up and then start developing applications in Groovy. Another feature is smooth Java integration. So Groovy seamlessly integrates with the existing Java code and library. So you can use Java libraries in Groovy without much hassle. So the next feature is vibrant and rich ecosystem. So the Groovy is so popular that it can be used to develop the web applications, reactive applications. It can also be used to develop concurrency, asynchronization, programming concepts, and you can use for test frameworks. You can use to build tools, code analysis, and so many things can be achieved using Groovy. Groovy allows both static typing and dynamic typing. That means you can use static typing for performance critical parts of your code and dynamic typing where flexibility and expectations expensiveness are more important. So this is one of the powerful features for Groovy. You can go through this documentation to understand more about different features of Groovy. Let's move on to our final topic. Why do we need to learn Groovy? In the upcoming module, we are going to learn performance testing tool concepts using JMeter. So JMeter is a very powerful testing tool and getting popularity these days. Earlier, LoadRunner was used across different organizations for doing performance testing for their applications. But these days, everybody shows so much of interest towards JMeter and then start migrating performance testing activities from LoadRunner to JMeter. So that is why I have included JMeter in this performance testing must-have skill series. Once we are done with this series, we can also plan for LoadRunner concepts. So in JMeter, it has enough test elements to perform most test cases, even a complex scenario. However, in certain test cases, it is not possible to perform by using only the default JMeter elements and functions. So we need some language to write the scripts and bypass those limitations. That's where Groovy comes into picture. Groovy is recommended scripting language for JMeter because it implements compilable interface that can be executed repeatedly without recompilation. That means it is a great for performing complex calculations because the script will only need to compile once for all threads and loops and will no longer need to spend resources on this compilation again. In JMeter, scripting will be done using JSR223 elements. So let's quickly go to the Apache official JMeter website. Here they say for intensive load testing, the recommended scripting language is one whose scripting engine implements the compilable interface. Since Groovy scripting engine implements compilable interface, it is recommended scripting language for JMeter. To understand more about JSR223, let's quickly understand what Java community process is. The Java community process, nothing but JCP, established back in 1998. It is a formless mechanism that allows interested parties to develop standard technical specifications for Java technology. It is kind of an open source, encouraging all the individual parties who are interested to develop some kind of standards technical specifications for Java. If you want to become a JCP member, you can very well do that by filling some form available at the JCP website. JCP membership for organizations and commercial entities requires some annual fees. Like if you are a company and you want to participate in JCP, then you may need to pay some annual fees. But if you are an individual, then it is free. So the JCP involves the use of Java specification requests, nothing but JSRs. So JSR is a formal document that describes proposed specifications and technologies for adding to the Java platform. If somebody wants to propose some specifications, then they need to submit a JSR document to the JCP. 
So they will review the proposed specification. Once the proposed specifications are approved, then the JSR will be added to that list. So there are hundreds of JSR available. Let's go to the official JCP website. In the official JCP website, it lists all the JSRs. Let's quickly look for 223. 223 is a scripting for Java platform. So this specification will describe mechanism allowing scripting language programs to access information developed in the Java platform. To develop all the scripting activities, they have created this 223 specification request. Currently, the status of JSR 223 is withdrawn. So what is withdrawn means? Let's quickly understand the definition of withdrawn. A JSR status label applied to a specification development project that started in the JCP and was later removed from the list of active project because no JCP member was willing to continue in the leadership role. So no one is ready to take the leadership role for this specification request. That is why they have mentioned the status as withdrawn. In JMeter, we are using these JSR elements to do all the scripting activities. In this module, we will learn the Groovy concepts that are really required for our performance testing script customizations. Okay, if you want to go through all the concepts, you can refer the Apache Groovy public documentation. If time permits, we can plan a separate Groovy tutorials in the future. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end. I hope you understood all the concepts explained in this video. In case any specific concept is not clear or require more detailed explanation, please feel free to mention it in the comment section. All the notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing it. If any of your friends are interested in learning performance testing, please share this series link to them so that they will learn all this concept for free and get benefited. I will see you with our next video in this module. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.